Hello, I'm Lieutenant Jeff Neal with the Cincinnati Fire Department. Uh, today we're going to go over the combination vehicles that the Cincinnati Fire Department has. Uh, the first vehicle we're going to go over will be the decon trailer. This is the oddball of the combination vehicles that we have. Uh, this is unlike any other vehicle out on the road today or in the industry. Uh, the reason being is that you have an, you have an air controlled tractor and an electric braking system trailer. You do not see this anywhere in the industry uh, and there are a lot of key safety features that you need to know. Uh, the other oversight that I had was uh, when talking to people, a lot of people do not understand that you do not have a braking system in the trailer portion if you're not uh, pressing the brake. So we will go over this from front to back and we will go over it uncoupling and coupling the vehicle safely so you can drive down the road. Uh, the first thing that you need to know is that you have an air controlled tractor. In that air controlled tractor uh, you will have uh, several safety features. If you start to lose air in any air controlled vehicle, be it this tractor, the tractor trailer that we're going to go over next, or any fire truck engine truck or any other air vehicle out on the road today uh, when you get to 60 70 psi you're going to have a low air alarm or an air emergency alarm come on within the cab when that occurs you need to find a safe spot to pull over and bring the vehicle safely to a stop if you can't do that and or you continue driving once you reach 30 to 40 psi it's not like you will not have brakes you will have brakes all the time. The brakes will lock into the hubs and you will come to a fast stop. The problem with that is, is in normal combination vehicles, they can, the, the air systems talk between the trailer and the tractor, they talk through the PSI of the air system. So on a normal vehicle, your trailer would lock up first and then your tractor and we will I will explain that when we go to the next combination vehicle but in this one since you have electric brakes the electric system does not know what is going on in the air system in the front because they do not talk to each other so if you lock your front up you still have 18,000 pounds pushing against the little baby tractor and there the likelihood of jackknife in this vehicle is extremely high if there's any vehicle in the Cincinnati Fire Department that you will jackknife, it will be this vehicle right here because of that fact. Um, the other thing, going to the trailer. The trailer has um, electric brakes on it. This is a tri-axle trailer that weighs about 18,000 pounds GVW. There are six brakes on 18,000 pounds, which is way overkill. Um, but that being said, we have set the braking system on the trailer all the way down or low because we found that we were dragging the trailer or chirping the brakes as we were trying to, to press them. Um, so we have set those all the way down uh, just to be able to control the trailer and allow the tractor to do most of the stopping with the air system. So now, now that you know the difference between the air system of the tractor and the electric system of the trailer, we're gonna go over step by step of how to uncouple and couple the vehicle and the reasons why you need is an absolute must that you do certain things because if you do not, this trailer will walk down the street on you. So we will go ahead and start the uncoupling phase of the, the tractor trailer. When I uncouple or couple any vehicle, the very first thing that I do is I go up and I take the key out of the tractor. The reason that I take the key out of the tractor is so I am not halfway through the uncoupling and or coupling portion of this and somebody think that I'm done and they get in and drive away and drop this trailer on top of me and or the ground and break the trailer. So the very first thing you wanna do is take the key. The second thing you wanna do on this trailer and this trailer alone. You do not have to do it on the air trailer that we're going to do next, but on this trailer, since it's an electric braking system trailer, 
you need to put the chalk blocks underneath the wheels. It is an absolute must that one goes in front and one goes in back. That keeps the vehicle or the trailer from walking itself down the road once we uncouple it. Because once we uncouple it, as it sits now, there is nothing holding the brakes. There are no brakes holding this trailer in place. The only thing that's holding this trailer as it sits now is the tractor being connected to the trailer that, and the air brakes on the tractor are what's holding this in place. Once we uncouple it, there is nothing holding this in place outside of gravity and friction. Friction of the tires and friction of your, your outrigger plates or your, your uh, drop plates. That's the only thing that is gonna hold this vehicle into place. So you need to have the wheel chalks set before you do anything else. So we've set the wheel chalks. The very next thing we're gonna do is come up and drop our landing pad. On this one, you have two speeds. You have a fast speed, and if you pull it all the way out, you have a slow speed. It puts it into another gear. On this trailer, it is so light, you do not need to go into the low speed. You can keep it into the high speed and drop the jacks. So this system is totally different than the system that we're gonna go over next. You need to pay particular attention to two things. What we are dropping now is what they call the first stage. The first stage drops bilaterally or on both sides down to the ground. So you wanna drop that down as far as you can because that is gonna be the more stable portion of this jack system. The second thing that you can do, which is called phase two, is pull the pin out of phase two. When you do that, you need to not only do that on the left side of the trailer, you need to do that on the right side of the trailer also. But when you do that, you need to pull up on the second stage and get that pin to lock in, okay? If you do not, and you leave it like this and you drive the trailer or you drive the tractor away from the trailer, you can drop this trailer all the way to the ground, okay? So you do not want to do that. You want to make sure that you bring it up, you lock the pin in, and then you continue to drop your pads. So both pins are now set on both the left side and the right side of the trailer. We can continue putting down the jack system and like in the next trailer, you hear it and you will hear the trailer start to creak up off the fifth wheel plate. When that happens, what you wanna do is go on this trailer about one to one and a half turns and what you're doing is you're pulling that trailer up off of the fifth wheel plate. You have on this tractor, you have the fifth wheel plate, which is connected to the tractor portion, and you have a kingpin that comes out of the trailer that connects into the, the fifth wheel plate. So what you have is you have the fifth wheel plate, you have the kingpin that rides up into the center, of the fifth wheel plate and across the back side of the kingpin, you have what they call a locking jaw. That locking jaw is the only thing that holds a trailer to a tractor anywhere in the industry. In order to release that locking jaw, you need to reach in and pull on this release lever. Once you pull that out, it is locked. Once it is locked, there is no way to manipulate that locking mechanism or that lock jaw to go back the cross side or the back side of that kingpin. The only way that you can get that locking jaw to lock across the back side of the kingpin is by uncoupling the tractor and recoupling the tractor back in 
by force and allowing that kingpin to hit up into the fifth wheel and lock that into place. So the next thing that we have are our connections that go from the tractor to the trailer portion. On this tractor trailer or this combination vehicle, the only connection that we have is the black cord. This is the only connection that connects from the tractor to the trailer. On tractor trailers, you have two uh, electric cords. You have a green cord and you have a black cord. On this triaxle trailer where you have electric braking system, you need to use the black cord. Over top of the connection, it says black cord only. You want to connect the black cord in because the black cord does two things. It controls all of your lights, um, but more importantly, um, and the main, the main reason that you use a black cord is it controls the electric brakes on the trailer system. If you were to put the green cord into the black connection, you would have lights, but you would not have any braking system or brakes in the trailer portion of this vehicle. So this will get the black cord uh, disconnected and you can put that into the dummy handler. So right now, we have our, our wheel chalks down, our jack set, our fifth wheel released, our electric cable undone, and now I'm gonna go ahead, get in the tractor, and pull the tractor away from the trailer. When you uncouple a vehicle, it is best practice to roll your window down so you can hear metal on metal, and or any other problem that you will have associated with uncoupling and or coupling the vehicle. So right now, the tractor is safely uncoupled from the trailer. Uh, right now, the only thing that is holding this trailer in place is friction and gravity. Friction of your outrigger plates, friction of your tires, and gravity holding it in place. If you did not have the wheel chalks down on the ground, as people got in and out of this vehicle, or in and out of this trailer, if you were parked on any type of grade, you could literally walk this trailer down the street because of the grade, because there, is, there are no brakes associated with this because they are electric brakes, they do not set, and you have unhooked the electric system from the tractor. So right now, gravity and friction are the only thing that is holding this trailer in place. So on the back of the tractor portion, what you have is the fifth wheel plate connected to the tractor. On the fifth wheel plate, you have where your kingpin rides up into your fifth wheel plate. Your kingpin is connected to your trailer. Once you ride up into the, your fifth wheel plate and you hit and you lock in, your locking jaw will come from the left and lock over into the right. Once your locking jaw locks across the right, your release lever will automatically close into the fifth wheel plate. People have been asking, do I need to hit the kingpin directly in line with this notch in the fifth wheel plate? No, you do not. As long as this hits the kingpin, any part of the kingpin hits within this one foot length, the kingpin will hit and ride itself up into the fifth wheel plate. Once it hits, it'll lock in and lock that, that locking jaw will lock across and your release lever will lock into your fifth wheel plate. So when you, if you want to see the kingpin, the kingpin is located underneath the trailer. That is a three inch diameter uh, pin, steel pin, that rides up into the fifth wheel plate to get it to lock in. And in the industry, the only thing that holds the trailer to the tractor is that kingpin and that uh, locking jaw on the fifth wheel. So we will go and start the process of coupling the, the tractor back to the trailer. The very first thing you want to do is go and lower down 
that trailer, that one to one and a half revolutions that you did to bring the weight off of the fifth wheel, now you wanna lower that back down to put the weight of the trailer onto the fifth wheel to allow that fifth wheel plate to rock down the trailer to push up onto the fifth wheel plate and lock into place. Okay, so again, you take your key out of the ignition, you come back, and on this vehicle and this vehicle alone, you connect your black cord because this is what is going to control your electric braking system on the trailer, and you connect that into the trailer portion, get it to lock in, and the cap comes down. The cap comes down and locks it into place because of the little notch that it has on the cap itself. So you want to push it in and allow the cap to close down to make sure that it's tightly fastened. The next thing you want to do is come back, look to make sure that your release lever is locked all the way in to your fifth wheel plate. You want to come underneath the trailer and look up into your fifth wheel plate to make sure that your locking jaw is all the way across the back side of your kingpin to make sure that it is locked into place. The next portion that you want to do is start to lift up your jack system. You want to lift it up enough to where you should be able to kick it and move it around, but don't lift it all the way. That is so when you are, you do your tug test and make sure that your tractor and your trailer are fastened together safely, that if it is not, that you do not uncouple this vehicle and drop the trailer all the way to the ground. You leave your wheel chalks into place and now we're going to do our tug test. When you're doing your tug test, you want to get in the vehicle, you want to start it up and on this vehicle and this vehicle only, you push in the tractor brake, you put it in the drive, and you will feel yourself move more in this vehicle than you will in the air, air vehicle that we explain next. So you should pull against, and once you reach to where your vehicle has, has settled out and you're up against the wheel chalk, you wanna give it a little bit of gas And all you want to do is pull the tractor against the trailer to make sure that that kingpin is set into place. Um, the reason that you can't do what you do on an air vehicle is there are no brakes that you can hold in place. So you're going to have more movement in this vehicle just because you're hoping or you need that wheel chalk to hold the trailer into place. So there will be more movement than you will have in the next vehicle, which is the air, air vehicle, the air tractor, air trailer vehicle. So at this point in time, we now know that we are safely connected. We can continue to raise the jacks up. So your first stage jacks are all the way up and set into place. You now need to raise up your second stage where you pull the pin and pull it all the way up and get it to lock into place, both sides.
Okay, so your jacks are up. The next thing that you need to do is to remove your wheel chocks. Remove that wheel chalk. We will have to take pressure off of this wheel chalk. Once you take pressure off of this wheel chalk and you remove that, you are now good to go to drive down the road. You are safely connected and coupled and you are able to drive down the road uh, safely to get it from point A to point B. This video is not to make you a class A driver. This vehicle or this video on this vehicle and the next vehicle is only to get you to know how to uncouple and couple a vehicle and get it or to check some of the safety features on it and get it from point A to point B safely uh, so it can be set up for operations.